GFRC stands for glass fiber reinforced concrete. And like concrete, it uses sand or aggregates and cement to bind everything together. But it also uses some specialty ingredients such as glass fibers and an acrylic polymer. Uh, so this is a standard um, hopper gun for drywall or, or uh, spray overlay. Um, it's absolutely stock. The only modification, if you will, is I've taken the hopper and I've turned it around the other way. So the handle's in the front because we tend to spray down. And if the hopper was pointed the other way, our mist coat would leak out. So this is the only modification necessary. The piece I'm going to be spraying today and, and casting is a five foot integral sink vanity that has a five inch dropped edge. And so I'm kind of incorporating a, a couple very common uh, situations to show you how to work with spraying in a tight area and packing up a a back and how to build out this front edge. But essentially what we're doing is, is a, a five foot integral sink bathroom vanity. These are actually bundles of individual fibers. These large chunks of fiber, if you, if what you're seeing are actually bundles. And these are 200 filament bundles. So I want those fil filaments to stay together. And just by folding the, gently folding the fibers in, uh, the fibers won't ball up, it won't fuzz up, and, uh, and, and that can cause workability issues. So by not overworking the fibers, they stay in this condition. If I just mixed and mixed and mixed and mixed and mixed, or, or, or even worse, let this sit and it got too stiff and I had more super plasticizer and try to go loosen it up again, what's going to happen is these uh, little filaments that are bundled together are going to start dispersing. That's about as loose as it's going to get, but you can see how it's, it's loosened up to some degree. It's not as thick and chunky as it was. Uh, there's a little bit of gloss around the edge. Um, if I kick the bucket, you can see it loosening up, but it's still a little thick. And just to see that, I'll do my trowel test. Lift it up, let it run off, and you can see how, how much material still clings. It's just too much, it's too thick. That's that eighth of an inch that was there. I want that to be thinner. I'm gonna get a better spray texture. All right, so I'm going to start spraying. Just pay attention to where I'm spraying and the pattern I'm using and the overall process I outlined. So it's a simple matter of it's all done by hand. You take a handful of, of backer material, and this is the consistency you want it to be, uh, sticky and spreadable. I'll bring my cart over here. And it doesn't really matter where you start, but the idea is we get a thin layer spread evenly over the whole surface. This first layer of backer is the most important layer because it's what, what the, the mist coat depends on uh, as, as a substrate. So it's, it's very important to make sure that this goes on evenly and, and completely so I don't have any voids. Anytime you're going up a vertical surface, you always work upwards against gravity. You can see how I'm pulling the fibers up. And as I get close to the top, I actually want to roll it, roll it up and over. And any material that hangs over the top edge helps hold that layer and keep it from running back down. You don't need to have a ton of buildup on top. That'll get ground off later once the concrete hardens. Um, but a little bit will help. And this is where the, the layers also get evened out better. You know, so the thickness is more consistent. I never want to push down, and I really want to avoid going horizontal because the more I work this material, the more I manipulate it. You can see how it runs. See how that's starting to run down? So I want to roll it up against gravity and just leave it. The last area that I really want to pay attention to is, are these edges, where I have a vertical surface intersecting with a horizontal surface, and it's basically a sharp corner. It's very easy when I'm rolling to, to either ignore that and then leave a void or press too hard and push all the backer away from that corner. So I want to make sure that I have material covering that corner, but I also want to make sure that, 
there's, there are no voids there. And that's a little bit tricky. Um, a lot of it has to do with just gently rolling it and seeing what it does. And now it's ready for the next layer. A uh, good way to test it is touch it. You can see how it's still moldable and plastic, but it's not so runny that it's going to slump. It's perfect. So we're going to make the next batch. I want some solid areas near the edges. So I'm just going to very gently, I don't want to be too heavy handed on this. I just want to gently seed it so it's stuck. And these are just filler pieces. So you can see how I'm going to have solid areas for weight bearing. And then there's enough space on top to apply a, th a fairly thick layer of backer to even this out. So this bottom edge is going to be quite robust to be flat and relatively even. It's going to be less work to grind that flat and flush. I always want to push against the forms so I'm not pulling the material away from the forms and exposing that miscoat.